This is the Battle of Charles Street, the 60th meeting between Loyola University and Johns Hopkins. Two schools separated by less than two miles. After about three inches of overnight snow, the plows are out, it's 35 and windy, and we are set to face it off here at Homewood Field, where Loyola comes in at one and one, and Johns Hopkins at two and one. Hi everybody, so glad you could join us. I'm Quinn Kesnick, this is Sheehan Stanwick Birch, who is Grew up actually between these two schools here in Baltimore. There's like a spot up the road where she, you know this rivalry better than every, anyone. What, what, what does this game mean? Well, I grew up circling this calendar on my, you know, just wanting to be here for this game, whether it's at Loyola or Hopkins. This is Baltimore lacrosse. Today, with a little bit of snow, canceled basically all the youth sports. So we should see a great group of fans here today. But these players know each other, and this is all about the sport. Johns Hopkins brings back the majority of their scoring from, from last year. Jacob Angelus is a proven commodity as a playmaker from the attack. Yeah, to the grad student, eight goals, six assists. He's so balanced. He's really the quarterback of this Hopkins offense. And the thing is about him is you have to guard him as both a shooter and a feeder. He's very slippery, coming around the crease, excellent finisher, shooting about 60%, has great vision. His head is always up, connects with his teammates, and really creates the ball movement on this Hopkins offense. Angeles did not play in this game last year. He was out with an injury. Loyola's a hard team to get a read on right now. They're one and one. Opening week, they dismantled Georgetown. They scored 18 goals. Last week in College Park, they only scored four and a loss to Maryland. What do we see today? It's the tale of two teams. And Maryland's defense is phenomenal. But just really this Loyola attack against Georgetown, even though they were losing the faceoff battle, which has been a really a factor for them in those first two games, those 18 games with the three attackers, Evan James, Matthew Minicus, and Adam Patra, they had 13 goals among each other. And then they go against Maryland, just four goals and just one point between those three attackers. So they're going to need to dominate possession, try to win some extra possessions if they can't win the faceoffs. Face-offs have been sold separately. Logan Callahan, who was outstanding against Georgetown last week with nine ground balls. A legal procedure against the Blue Jays, and we get to see this Loyola offense for the first time. Adam Patra, 51, on attack. You see Davis Lindsay and Evan James on the far wing. Midfield of Houston. Matt Higgins, 24. Looks like they're trying to run Patra a bit through the box. This is Patra, the Canadian, the lefty. Curls left-handed, they give him all sorts of space. This pump fake trickles to Matt Houston. Step down, far side, good stop by Johns Hopkins goalie, Chase Erlin. Erlin made uh, nine saves last week in the, in the win at Georgetown. Nine very good ones. Yeah, I thought he was really impressive with his stops. His best game. And Loyola being very patient on offense. I mean, one of the things with Maryland, when they had so few possessions, they really sometimes were rushed with some of their shooting, didn't take a lot of the shots that Coach Toomey wanted them to take. So Erlin comes up with a nice stop. Jacob Stabner clears, and you see the Hopkins attack. Garrett Degna on the lefty on the far side, 40. You got Russell Melendez, 31, with the black cleats. And Jacob Angelus behind the net, 23. The midfield, you'll see about eight to 10 midfielders. Offensive coordinator John Crawley will rotate a bunch. Melendez gets top side. Degna on a snapshot left-handed, and Luke Stout, Loyola's goalie, the lefty senior from West Jenny, picks up that fluttering shot. This is Mustang Sally, a six on five for the Greyhounds. Trailer, Hopkins collapses, weak shot deflected, run down by Davis Lindsay and Loyola will maintain possession with a fresh shot clock. Loyola likes to push transition. Hopkins head coach Peter Milliman said that's one of the keys to this game, getting back in the hole. Their midfielders cannot flee to the substitution box. Davis Binney right-handed, looked to far side. He had James, a teammate. Rough ground ball play by Hopkins. Excellent man ball. And the Blue Jays will clear right to left. Brandon Avilas runs through traffic, picked up by Diego Roman. And now Hopkins will sub. Well, it was owned this or controlled this rivalry. Seven and two in the last nine. Hopkins won every matchup from 
1970. Stout makes a nice save against Peshko. Stout making 16 saves in that Maryland game. I love what Coach Toomey said to us. It used to be the Charles Street Massacre. And now that they've owned some of those wins, it's more the Battle of Charles Street. It's turf. We were down there earlier for the game. It is a little bit slippery with the snow that happened earlier this morning. Got all cleared off. Nice ground ball play. Well, looking to push it now. Hopkins defense unsettled. Nice save by Erling. His best of the game. Wow, an offside hip. Gorgeous stop. And that's got the Hopkins bench fired up. Little tempo now as teams going back and forth. The Blue Jays do not have the numbers advantage, and Brett Martin elects to slow things down. Smart decision there, especially when going back and forth. Both goalies coming up with some nice stops. Hopkins has not showcased much transition yet this season. Well, here's some more midfielders. They'll run a bunch, as I said. Brooks English, 25. Hunter Shaw, that the freshman, 34, lefty. Melendez. Let me see how bouncy Stout is between the pipes. 15 in the, the Evergreen jerseys out of West Jenny. Wears the same number as John Galloway. Angeles. Blue Jays motion offense. A lot of ball movement, a lot of people movement. Brooks English from the wing. Slips is double team. No call, ball loose off Loyola. And now maybe a push. Ball stays with Hopkins. Shot clock at 18. The injured player, Brooks English, is down on the turf. Sheen, you mentioned it. This is a new surface here. So the pellets, it's pretty soft. And with snow overnight, and plowing, it feels like traction may be an issue in some spots. Hopkins medical staff looking at Brooks English, the sophomore from Lawrenceville in Jersey. Grew up in Ontario, Canada. Double T's, he just loses. Oh, wow. Yeah, He's stuff's fine. in that ankle, weird. Could have been a slash. Like, he gets tangled here in the turf a little after the slip. Double team comes, the lefty. It's Remy Reynolds. And it goes from bad to worse for English. He's being assisted off the field. Not putting much weight. I mean, we were down in the field earlier talking with the coaches. I thought it felt slippery just with my, and now I've got snow boots on, so much different footwear than the players. But with that wetness, really cold day, even the sidewalk's still slippery with the snow. The snow didn't stick to my sidewalk, thankfully. It stuck to my car. So there was uh, quite a bit of snow and ice on my car this morning. Overnight snow here in Baltimore. It's still the winter portion of the season. You see the snow drifts with the black pellets on the end line. Charlie Toomey mentioning that in warm-ups, how all their shots that went wide got stuck in the snow drifts, and they're going to lose a dozen yeah, cross balls. <laughs> Not going to find those white balls. Loyola playing a little zone defense. A sloughed in man-to-man. -man. Well, it's a man-to-man. -man. They do it late in the shot clock, and it's effective. Little's defense so strong, really get their sticks in the passing lanes. Late in the shot clock, Loyola really condensed things defensively, willing to give up the, the distant shot with their goalie, Luke Stout. Let's see if they can get something cooking on offense. Erlin's been outstanding for Hopkins so far with two saves. So Lindsey, Patra, and James the starting attack. Looks like they're running Minicus some out of the box today. That's a sloppy turnover. Houston lost it. Potential numbers for Johns Hopkins. Jaronski, Angelus, Degnan. Trailers covered well, and Royal does a good job in the transition defense. Now comes the sub phase. Players will sprint towards the substitution box or the midline and exchange. Matt Collison, the big lefty sophomore. One of 10 Canadians in the Hopkins roster. Grimes, Angelus, one more. Peshko to Melendez, right-handed. Collison fumbles. 
still 30 on the shot clock. Hopkins has been very patient in half-field sets this season. They will pass the ball until you're dizzy. Collison, lefty rip. I love their ball movement. Doesn't get stick, stuck in anyone's stick. They keep their heads are up, move the passes, skip passes. Really gets the defense spinning. Grimes, big lefty. And now Angelus has got the shorty. He's got a step, feed inside. Nice stop by Stout. Rebound control so critical when he comes up with it. The lefty from West Genesee. So Hopkins got their look from the doorstep. Stout with the body save. Beautiful stop. Just got to see the space. And I love the passing from Hopkins to get to the inside. Just got to take one more second and see the net. Considering that it's in the low 30s, fans still streaming into Homewood Field. Left side of your screen, you'll see the save as Loyola turns it over behind the Hopkins net. So Loyola's offense has been a little disjointed thus far as we're tight at zero about halfway through this first quarter. Low scoring game on a cold Saturday in February. Loyola students smart enough to grab their seats on the far side of the stadium where you get the benefit of the sun. We could use some sun. <laughs> great great crowd. Great turnout. Dylan Bauer now right-handed, jams the ball down low to Angelus, and that's a force feed and a turnover. Loyola looked so sharp in their opening season win against Georgetown. Today, though, it's been turnover city, and now Hopkins off the carpet, Degnan to Angelus to survey the field. What does he have? Back to Degnan, and that backed up to Stout. And an offsides violation against Johns Hopkins. Back and forth action. When Loyola has turned the ball over, they've done a really good job of getting back in the hole defensively, so Hopkins has not been able to push the transition. Another Loyola turnover. Using that sideline as an extra defender. Excellent job there, putting on the pressure. Loyola now has five turnovers in the first eighth of this ball game. That's on pace for, what, 40 turnovers? 10 a quarter? That's a lot. That's way more than, than you would like. Grimes, a natural lefty. Brendan Grimes, now a senior. Melendez stands out with those black cleats. And Degnan, 40. He's got a cannon of a shot. There is 40. He's scored in 33 straight games. Who and Hopkins can win the matchup? We talk about their ball movement, but right now they're not setting effective picks, and nobody can run by their man. Until Collison does. <laughs> Sensing that he's the guy that needs to get to the rack, the big sophomore breaks the ice. Honorable mention All-American back in 2023, Carlson, beautiful inside roll. Watch him take his matchup, gets to the inside. Excellent finish and shot. He's been inserting himself more and puts Hopkins on top, one to nothing. The Battle of Charles Street, Division I Lacrosse, Loyola and Johns Hopkins two years ago in 2022. Joey Kamish, who had four goals, but it was too much Scott Smith, the defender, and Johns Hopkins wins 11-10. Last year was a, a shocking result. Hopkins, who was banged up at the time, went up to Loyola, to Ridley, and got smoked. Down 6-1, down 12-3. Too much Seth Higgins and Dylan Binney. Loyola wins. There you see some of the data. Series that started in 1939. They didn't play from 19, I think 69 to 94 when the series was uh, rekindled. And Loyola, had, their first win over Hopkins was in 1994. Dave Cottle and the Greyhounds. I remember it particularly, particularly well. For many years, Loyola was kind of the little brother. And that has changed. 
it's a shame it went on such a break because it is such a great matchup between both programs. I mean, all the players know each other. I can't believe you didn't have any the chance to play them during no, your career. We, we scrimmaged them during the fall. But Loyola, Loyola was still in the building process under Dave Powell at that stage. That 1990 season was a really turning point in their program history, making it to the national championship game where they lost to Syracuse. And that appearance kind of warranted Hopkins adding them to their schedule. Blue Jays in the half court. Angela splits right to left. Got great feet, good balance, and makes astute decisions. Dylan Bauer has been a party starter for Hopkins, seven and white. He's been creative and tough to cover. Shot clock now at 10. Angelus gets underneath. Trail check, no good. He's buried. And Stout cleans up the trash. Great defense by Loyola. Can they clear it? It's been a comedy of errors for Loyola. They've got five turnovers, but a good handle. And here comes Alex Bean. Smart move by Bean. Headman pass to Davis Lindsay. And now Adam Potra's got all sorts of space. Another slippage. Patra loses his footing as Loyola now sets up coming out of the substitution box. Looking for their first goal. Matt Houston right-handed draws the double. Ball spins and Hopkins defense recovers. This will be Higgins. Jams that ball inside, deflected out of bounds, but off a Loyola stick. Hopkins ball, turnover number six or seven. Six. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. On a cold Saturday from Baltimore. Quentin Sheen, a tip of the cap to our crew who's out here early setting up in some uh, sub-freezing temperatures. Never fun, never easy. Grimes now to Melendez inside. Loyola seems comfortable covering the Hopkins patterns. Melendez, nice pick set against Bean. Step down Peshko, and he yanks it right-handed wide. Grimes. Looking for leverage against McGillicuddy. Six and green. A short hop to Melendez now. Scoots out of bounds in front of the Loyola bench. Matt Dwan, the defensive coordinator for Loyola, doing a fine job thus far today. As Lindsay splits left-handed. I thought he had an open look at a shot right there. I mean, I understand wanting to have some patience. Sheen, that's a dilemma now for Loyola. You're not winning very many face-offs on the year. You've turned it over, and Patra, left-handed, one touch from Lindsay, catches the Hopkins defense napping in the far side of the field. The Loyola students are going nuts. So Patra coming off a Maryland game where he had zero goals on seven shots. The whole offense just limited to four goals in that Maryland game. They were looking to rebound today. And Lindsay, beautiful pass from behind the cage, right in front of Patra. This is the look they want. And Erlen, when he's turning around, just has a hard time to, to place up, get his footing, and to make that stop. Patra, grad student, lefty from Ontario. Voice of the offense. Coach Toomey was calling him Potsy, coming off a 49-point season a year ago. Callahan wins that easily out the front side to silent the Loyola student section on the far side that has shown up in droves in the face of an $18 ticket. Can you believe it? 18 bucks. They're going to get their $18 worth today, I'll tell you that much. One apiece, under three minutes to go, first quarter, 60th meeting. Johns Hopkins in white, Loyola in their all green. Slick chrome helmets. Evans right-handed. 
twisting as Bauer off to Degnan, who has scored a goal in 33 straight games. Melendez is a transfer from Marquette. Evans. Loyola very aware of the strong-handed tendencies of the Hopkins players. Stout got a piece of that as Melendez got to his strong right hand. So Degnan's a lefty, Melendez is a righty, Angelos prefers his right, Hunter Schultz, that's a lefty. This is part of the, the scouting report. And you're gonna look for Loyola to strongly defend hands in this game. And add that to the challenging mix that Hopkins continues to rotate people in on midfield. So defensively, gotta remember all the tendencies and lots of different people coming in for Hopkins. Only five guys have played 60 minutes for Hopkins this year. Degnan with a BB from the outside, that beam eight on the perimeter, and the Loyola crowd comes to their feet as the Greyhounds clear it up the far side. Evan James with time and space to the bouncer. Greyhounds take a 2-1 lead. Quick strength offense for Loyola. Career high five goals and four assists for James in that Georgetown game. Did not score against Maryland. He rebounds today. It's a nice quick outside shot, high bouncer. Loyola has stayed so disciplined and tough on defense in the face of six early turnovers. And now they're playing with great energy here on enemy soil. You'd never guess it. Loyola student section, I don't know, four to one, five to one ratio over the Hopkins student section. And you just feel that this has turned into almost a, a home court advantage. Loyola University located a mile and a half up Charles Street to our left, north. And now under a minute, 42 seconds to go. Davis Lindsay you will take his time. You mentioned that energy. That was one of the things that Coach Toomey and his staff wanted to see more out of Loyola. Create their own energy, get the, the feelings on the not only on the sidelines, but on the field. Felt that was lacking in that Maryland loss. Beautiful check. Beautiful over the head check by Brett Martin. No numbers for Hopkins. 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Angelus. Choppy steps, look down low to Melendez, and that ball deflected and out of bounds. Stays with Hopkins with 3.5. So if you're loyal or defensively, you've got to find a man and check up. Charlie Toomey coming out to talk to the officials. Referee Mike Henfey. Our umpire is Christy Felice and Patrick Kenny. Who was that deflected off of? A Loyola stick, and so Hopkins has the ball with 3.5 to go. Plenty of time. If you were here for that week zero game against Denver, you know 3.5 seconds is an eternity. Melendez, no call, feed inside to Pesco, ends up on the turf. And Loyola. And their fan base, and their feisty defense. In a rivalry game, down one nothing. They have answered with back-to-back -back goals. They are proud. They are the Greyhounds. And we're going to have a good one. You can feel the energy here in Baltimore. Finally on a normal week schedule. You know, they, they beat Towson. It was a midweek game. And then Georgetown. Still trying to figure some things out offensively in terms of combinations. getting the right personnel in. And I, that week zero loss to Denver will prove, I think, a lot of valuable lessons. You were calling that game just a, yeah. such a weird fourth quarter. I, I watched it back a couple times. Denver, amazing plays. Higgins left-handed. Bizarro world game, actually. Hopkins led by three in the fourth quarter. Led by two late. Denver tied the game up with no time on the clock. There was a non-releasable penalty. If you're a young coach or player, if you go to the app, you're on the app, ESPN Plus, call up the last five minutes in that game and watch all the different scenarios. Man down face off. 
man up clear, some clock uh, and shot clock scenarios. There was a lot going on there from a strategy standpoint. I thought it was a fascinating ending. What was it, 2.9 seconds when they scored the winning shot? An extra man that then carried over into sudden death. Hopkins, a lot of passing, but not much penetration. Yeah, so they're gonna Melendez, right-handed rip. They haven't had a ton of outside shots. They're moving the ball well, but they need to challenge this Loyola defense. We saw the one score by Collison with the inside roll. They gotta be a little more assertive, try to go to Cage. Loyola switching on picks as Mustang Sally now ends up on Angelus, a pair of 23s. This is a good matchup. Mustang Sally, an excellent player for Loyola. Picking on the other shorty now, Max McGillicuddy. Melendez likes this matchup. Loyola will be slow to double team. And now we have an interference call off ball, feed inside. Potential second Another call flex. coming up against. So it's going to be an interference and a from the rear against Loyola. As you see, Luke Stout, the senior lefty from West Genesee, averaging 13 and a half saves per game, had 16 against the Terps. Talking to people in the Premier Lacrosse League, uh, Luke is definitely on the radar as a draftable goalie or a free agent pickup. I went to a Loyola practice on uh, Thursday, late January, and he was on fire. I mean, it was, I was ultra impressed. Interference. First one's right side of your screen. You, you cannot check a, an offensive player's stick if they're not in possession of the lacrosse ball or within five yards of the ball. So Hopkins extra man, it's a six on four. So Loyola will be in a box or diamond formation. Degnan is a sniper, near side, 40 and white. Boom, turn and rake. Really perfectly executed for Hopkins. Up two players, working the ball around, you get it to Degnan. Look at all the time and space he has there. If you give him the room to shoot the lefty, just an excellent pinpoint shot. That's a goal now in 34 straight games for Garrett Degnan, the sixth year senior, chasing Ryan Brown and Terry Reardon's 37 consecutive games. Wow. And now penalties are becoming an issue with Loyola. Flags down off the faceoff win. Degnan puts his shoulder down and Mustang Sally picks up the ball. Hopkins needs to keep their composure in this skirmish because they're about to go up a man. You can feel the emotion, the energy. Hopkins band and crowd emboldened by the challenge that these Loyola fans have brought here, right? <laughs> I think the challenge for Loyola right now, Sheen, is to play physical, to play rough, to play tough. All about composure. We had talked about how Loyola's defense was doing a, a very nice job. Here, take a look at the penalty. Chase Gregory and Sally. Foul on 17, the sophomore, or redshirt freshman, Chase Gregory from Maine. As Hopkins now spins the rocket with their extra man unit. The power play. Chauvet, a lot of shooters. Scary lefty shooters. Hunter Chauvet right here, 34. Nice, nicely tracked by Stout. Stout sees that. Chauvet had a pair of three goal games early this season against Towson and against Denver. He's only a freshman, but he's got a silky smooth and powerful shot. What a start for him. He did not look like a freshman 
in his debut games for Johns Hopkins. Such two, a quick release. 2-2. Two, two. 12 minutes to go, second quarter. 60th. Battle of Charles Street. Loyola in the green. Located up the road about two miles, and Johns Hopkins are hosts today. Next Sunday, Georgetown is at Notre Dame. I'll be in South Bend with Chris Cotter. Irish have to take care of Marquette on Sunday. Georgetown playing Penn this weekend. Congratulations to Notre Dame's women's program for their win this weekend over Northwestern. Big upset, number one Northwestern, the reigning national champions. See a, a flag down. Patra draws the double team. Davis Lindsay, and that's not gonna that's not gonna have a happy ending when you take that ball inside and finally we get a whistle. And these officials now have to work hard to maintain that the focus is on lacrosse. Soft ass call. White foul number 10, slash. One minute, 60 seconds. It's like a slash call. Boom. Yeah. Avila's 10 and white, the guilty party. So Loyola with the power play. Ball on the far side. Mark Van Arsdale, their experienced championship game winning coordinator. Outside rip, but a low to low variety. Minicus made that easy for goalie Chase Erlin and a nice snappy clear up to Patrick Deans. So good look by Erlin. His outlet passing has been terrific this season, and the Hopkins bench pumped up after that defensive stop. It's a little battle of, of the veteran goalies. Luke Stout for Loyola and Chase Erlin for Johns Hopkins, knotted up at two. Showed up, had it done, and then you, if you go onto the Hopkins Twitter X page, you can see how they say, thanks for your help. We'll help you out in December when it's playoff time for you guys. Gotta love the support. Dylan Bauer now running for his life against Chase Gregory. Hopkins uh, down a man. For another 10 seconds, so Bauer takes Gregory, 17 in green. Redshirt sophomore. Grew up on a goat farm in Maine. Good looking young player for Charlie Toomey. And now we're back to even strength with uh, 30 on the shot clock. Russell Melendez to Garrett Degnan. De Degnan may be one of the oldest players in program history to play at Johns Hopkins. He's a sixth year senior as that ball is airmailed out onto University Parkway. <laughs> But Degnan, a six-year senior, graduated high school in 2018. One of the things Coach Milliman said about having you know, a six-year player like Degnan is just the, the maturity he has. Two-time captain. It can be a slippery slope, Shane. We see now with, with obviously, post-COVID, all sports college uh, lacrosse, wrestling, football, 22, 23, 24, 25 year olds still competing in college. Sometimes taking that fifth or sixth year is not beneficial. And you see some athletes who burn out or check out early. Bouncer, Erlin tries to fight that one off. This stays with Loyola with 37 to go on the shot clock. So you see the early sub phase Loyola keeping that green light on as Mustang Sally, 23 and white, finally comes off the field. But he, he has got an open door policy to, to push the tempo. That's in Loyola's DNA. That's part of what allowed this team to win a national championship back in 2012. See what they got in the settled sets. Dylan Binning, near side to Henry Haberman. Shot clock under 10. Evan James being covered by Scott Smith. Gets help from Quentin Kilrain. 
and an effective defensive possession. So they put Scott Smith on Evan James, eight in green. He's their primary dodger, the most dangerous and athletic player. And Scott Smith, once again, answers. Smith, just a top cover guy, really fun to watch. Saw the highlight earlier of him scoring in the Loyola game last season. Smith's, Smith's a pro, now a senior from Conestoga. Mom, Lori, swam at Penn State. Dad, Mark, was a football player at Nova, and, and Scott was a multi-sport athlete. He's the heart and soul of this Hopkins defense. Halfway through the second quarter, 2-2. Two -two. Evan Grimes, trail check. That is a signature of this Loyola defense. Pinch double teamed and a wild ground ball scramble. Timeout called by Peter Milliman. Hopkins had possession. Milliman wants a penalty after the whistle. Uh, Cotter and Clark going to Santangelo's last night in Liverpool for some fine Italian cuisine. Paul's going to be hand talking pretty good tonight at six on ESPNU. I'll be watching. Well, I'll have multi screens going because the PLL sixes is going on down in Virginia. Also, if you have the app, like there's dozens and dozens of games you can watch. Off the timeout, Ryan Evans now against the shorty. Gets inside, stout, split save, rebound control, comes up Loyola. So Ryan Evans got inside Max McGillicuddy, but senior goalie Luke Stout plays his angle. Love how Evans went to cage, though. Hopkins is going to need to do more of that. Good pressure on the clear. Can they come up with it? Another potential turnover. Players lose the ball momentarily, and it's McDermott. Ooh, Casey McDermott and another penalty. This game is off the rails in terms of physical play and these ground ball plays. Patrick Deans and Mustang Sally now have to be separated at the logo. Lots of words being exchanged. This is kind of one of those games I'd love to have a player mic'd up to get some real inside scoop of what they're being said. But very physical. You have to have composure. When the emotions are high in a game like this, got to rein in the unnecessary penalties. Cross check. One minute. 80 on the shot clock. So Mustang Sally has a seat for a minute in the penalty box. Call for a cross check. And watch this. Wow. One minute. Wow, that could, you know, we are using video review. The way he used his helmet and followed through, he's lucky he only got a minute on that. That's just unnecessary. I don't think you need to make that play right there. McDermott, good to see he's no uh, worse for wear on, on the Hopkins bench. So another extra man now. That's been the story of the second quarter, penalties. Stout's got six saves, the lefty from West Genesee up in Syracuse, New York. Really balanced and fundamental. Degnan with the heat, and he mixes it up with a bouncer. So Degnan beats Stout high earlier and now scores his second of the game with the offside bouncer. Back to back goals for Degnan. Same spot on the field. But again, the placement is what he changes. First one goes high. This one, the bouncer, you see where it bounces in that crease area. Stout goes to get it, gets into the splits. Well, he gets his feet set, Sheehan, and he can look the goal. The band's gonna play, and, and, and we want more. You're gonna hear it. Loyola's gotta adjust their man down philosophy and strategy to take away Forty and Degnan. And, and you want to pick your poison with somebody else from the outside. So two extra man goals by Garrett Degnan now. Gives Hopkins a 3-2 to two lead. Loyola hasn't scored in this second quarter. Loyola has to limit the penalties. Those last two goals by Degnan were when they were players up. He scored one when there were two players up. The last one, one player up. Dylan Bauer near side to Degnan, who has a pair. Pesco, one more for Melendez. Hopkins running kind of a weave. Pesco, tall senior. Down the right-handed alley. No space. 
Diego Roman with a good takeaway check against Bauer, and Stout rakes that ball into his cross. Oh, that's got to be a flag, yeah, and it is. High, yep. Michael Callahan running for his life. A three Hopkins Blue Jays, and that should be a slash after the, the play there, and there's no call. Charlie Toomey can't believe it. The refs caught the first one, but late in that play, did he not get hammered with slashes to the slash. knees? Yeah, and then one right into the like stomach area. The official was right there. We'll see what they end up calling. So Callahan, who we were told might not play in this game with injuries, the junior from Avon Old Farms, the Wing Beavers, comes over to the bench. Coach Two is lit up. One minute, we're locking full time. Full time. Full time, one minute. I, I thought he got away with one on, on, on the back end of that. The first call is easy and obvious. Boom, that's a cross check to the neck. That's gonna be two minutes. I mean, that, that's that's an extension. And late, here's the slash they didn't call. Whack, whack, twice. I mean, come on, that is a slash. Agreed, the official was right there. He might have been screened for C that, but it was in full view to us. Power play for the Hounds. They've got two players inside. Higgins with an outside look. 24 and Green's got an outside hammer. Patra probably their best mid-range shooter, but how about that snapshot by Matt Minicus? Woohoo! That was smooth, and the Loyola fans are on their feet going berserk. Minikins with his sixth goal of the season. I didn't think he had much of an angle, and he doesn't have much of an angle when he rips that shot. Look at the placement. It looks like he's in a feed, and instead he sees the room, he steps it, gets Erlen just kind of holding that pipe. He sees the open net. Beautiful release point, low to high. Minikis, the sophomore from Connecticut, whose older brother Brian played at Colgate. Georgetown and now plays for the PLL Chaos and the Loyola fans on the far sideline were in line with that shot. They had the best seat in the house. Nothing like being behind the shooter when he drops his stick and the goalie mirrors it and Erlen just hunched just a little bit and he painted, painted that near side corner. Nothing like rivalry games, folks. Games that bring people back to campus. I don't care what the sport is. Last night I was down at the Naval Academy for Army Navy Wrestling, a packed house. Again, you're bringing people to campus for sport, non-revenue sporting events, and it, that was an epic, epic match. Today you're seeing the, the same thing here in Charm City. These Loyola fans, no better student section in the country than the Loyola student section. The non-releasable penalty that continues now with an extra man face-off, a power play face-off for Loyola. This is huge. And a holding violation against Johns Hopkins' Tyler Dunn gives Loyola a, a, an extra crack at it. Non-releasable penalties are being called more often now in the men's game. We saw that against Denver. It really was the leading storyline. Seen that around the country now with some of these high hits. Referees levying a one minute, two minute, or even three minute non releasable. And so those specialty face offs and the power play penalty killing units to me have never been more important. James, the righty, up top to Kamish. Joey Kamish, they're giving Kamish the outside shot. They're baiting three and green to step in and let it rip. That's not his game, though. Eventually, he's going to pump it and let it go. Minicus, the lefty, far side. Hopkins really packed in, baiting the outside shot. Teams are at even strength. Hopkins has to find their matchups, and they do. It's effective man down defense by the guys in white. They packed it in tight. Under four minutes to go, tied up at three. Seth Higgins, senior big lefty. 
at a nearby St. Paul's. Feet inside. Patra. One touches that wide. There's no reset on the shot clock. Down to 15 for Davis Lindsay. Good job by Jaronski. Clock under 10. Sidewinder by Minicus goes wide. So Loyola's got seven seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Good matchup behind the cage. Well defended by Hopkins. And you get a shot clock violation and a play on for Hunter Jaronski. Little six on five now. Hopkins has got numbers. There's a potential trailer break here. Loyola gets into the defensive hole, and Hopkins now will settle. 60th meeting, a series that started back in 1939. Hopkins leads the series 49 to 10, but Loyola has won seven of the last nine, including last year, a decisive victory at Ridley. Local rivalries are really beneficial for the sport of lacrosse. You get local coverage. Dagnon left-handed. Guys like Mike Preston down in, in the in the uh, in the press box below us going to write about this game in the Baltimore Sun. You get local news coverage. WMAR Channel 2 is here with their camera. Circular passing, this motion offense. Positionless offense. Melendez hits the side of the net and Stout Stout just gets checked in the arms. No call. Long outlet, well received, That's and a nice one pass. more pass. Diego Roman's gonna lose it though, as he is double teamed by Stabner. And here comes Scott Smith with a full head of steam. He's gonna keep going. Pete Milliman wants them to slow the tempo down. They don't have numbers. So turnovers have been a storyline for Loyola. They've got 11 on the game. Hopkins unofficially with seven. Stout has been particularly strong in goal. He's also done a nice job of getting some of those balls outside the crease, whether it's raking it back in, a ground ball outside. I, I, it's, Sheen, remarkable you mentioned that because at their practice, they do a lot of those rebound drills in front of the crease where defenders either have to scoop and, and hand it back to the goalie or box out. Degnan looking for the hat trick. It's an important part of the game. I mean, that's when a lot of times defenses get beat is when you have those rebounds outside and no one knows where the ball is. The goalie can't see it, so. Yeah, that and uh, an excessive amount of defensive ball handling and passing. They start practice with 15 minutes of, of cross field passes, angle passes. Their defense can handle. It's built into the way they practice. This type of play right here, no call. Wow, I tell you, that has got to be something. Charlie Toomey is losing it on, on the sideline. The officials will say that Alex Bean turned here, but was contact not from the rear? I'd love to see another angle of that. Charlie's hat hit the turf. Bean makes a nice ground ball and turns, and all of a sudden, he's in the crosshairs right here. Degnan gets him on the shoulder. Yeah, it looks... Even a cross check. Is there a follow it through as high. a cross check? Watch. You think it's high? No, it's, oh, yeah. sh it's shoulder to shoulder. And, and they're going to say like he behind. turned. Yeah. You know, that'll be Hopkins' ball. Degnan's a big body is, coming is at Is that a too. push with possession? Is that a from the rear? Is it, you could even call it a loose ball push and give the ball back to Loyola as a compromise call. I've seen, she looks at some of the game summary on the lower left. Turnovers, Loyola with 12, Hopkins seven. Degnan with those two goals on six shots, both when they were man up. Yeah, uh, all, all three goals in this quarter have been of the power play variety. Degnan with a pair, Minicus. Great crowd on hand here. The winter portion of the schedule hopefully is over soon. Overnight snow, they plowed the field, and the fans have shown up. It's 36 and windy. Feels like it's 20 up here in this uh, outdoor press box with a cement floor. I've lost my toes. 
just trying to hold on to the voice. You know, another interesting stat is Loyola just 10 shots. Hopkins got 17. But that's the other, another area where Loyola struggled in their loss to Maryland. We're not able to generate a ton of shots, limited possessions. Loyola's had a lot of those turnovers, so have not been able to generate some of the offensive looks. They got to get more shots on Cage. Full shot clock. Full shot clock now under 45 seconds for Johns Hopkins off the timeout. John Crawley is their second year offensive coordinator, a former Blue Jay, outstanding young coach. This will give you a look inside what he thinks he likes best coming out of that timeout. Looks like they will wait for the last shot. Got plenty of time left. Pesco being eyed up by Michael Callahan. Bauer draws the pole. Collison to big man. He'll draw a double team. Left hand bouncer. Collison got to a good spot. Plenty of time. Under 10 now. Bauer. Effective pick. Sneak attempt from Collison goes out of bounds. Loyola ball with 2.9. May as well just send this towards the Hopkins goal. Stout does that. And so a low scoring, highly intense first 30 minutes of lacrosse here in this Battle of Charles Street. History, tradition, and passion on display. Come up at halftime. The Cross with Paul Carcaterra and Charlotte North. Paul and Charlotte discuss the single biggest Division I impact transfers. That's coming up next at halftime. Hopkins, Collison struck first. Loyola, Patras, and James tied at three in this rivalry game. that late first quarter, all of a sudden you look up and there's a couple thousand fans on the far side. They're going nuts. And I think these, these young student athletes just got really excited. They see a sea of green on that side of the field. Fans lining the fence as well. They're very loud. I and mean, this is what you talk about the Crosstown rivals. Not only do the teams love it, the fans love it, student body. Rivalry games mean so much. As Pacheco wins that face off, over Tyler Dunn of Johns Hopkins. So Hopkins on paper had a big advantage in the face-off department. Logan Callahan had done so well in Hopkins' initial three games. Not the story today. Loyola flirting with their 13th turnover, and now we're gonna have a flag called on Hopkins' Brett Martin. So this is kind of a statement call from the Zebras, who I thought let the game kind of get out of control in the first half. Pushing foul on Brett Martin, the senior from Half Hollow Hills East on Long Island, uh, an outstanding high school football player. Here it is. That's a push from behind. Yep. Got him getting from the front or the side. Loyola struck once on the extra man. It was Matt Minicus, seven and green from the left wing. Minicus, James, and Patra. The spearhead inside to Potter. Nice save by Erlin. He got that off the left thigh. And now with rebound control, Erlin may have had a little bit of a slow start or a rough ending to that uh, initial game against Denver. He's been outstanding since. Veteran presence, 55 games as a starter sheen at Cornell. Led the Big Red to a national championship game. So I think these big moments, uh, I think that's where he's going to thrive. I, I don't worry about him being on a roller coaster. I think he'll play his best in big games. Chase Erlin, graduate student from Victor, New York. Wants to be a teacher. Hopkins offered him that opportunity to continue his studies. Having a leader that's seen so much in goal, as your goalkeeper position, just having that experience, a huge asset. Andrew was jitterbugging and sweeping across the formation. 
Collison's in his comfort zone, skips it to Bauer. Melendez bypasses a left-handed shot. And here you see the Hopkins motion offense now with 18 to go on the shot clock. Really low scoring game, just three goals apiece. Bauer inside roll and finds pay dirt. Is he in the crease? No goal. Let's see what we got here. The official on the near side is waving the goal off. The official on the far side threw a flag. Stout, so Stout is down. down. Stout is still down. As contact was made with the goaltender, and the goal's going to count. Bauer ends up in the goal mouth, but how does he get there? Ah, he got on the stout That's leg. exactly why we have that rule to protect the goaltenders. Diego Roman off the inside roll just rides him into the crease. Charlie Toomey does have the replay flag available if he wanted to review this call. As everything goal related is reviewable by instant replay in 2024. We have the coach's challenge, one challenge per half. Opts not to use it. He's had success using it so far in this season. McDermott does a nice job with that ground ball off the wing of the face off, 33 and white. Veteran out of Rochester, and he subs off. He's gonna be used more in a two-way role as a wingman adding value, that's a big play. Jay's now with the ball on a one goal lead. Grimes left handed, too much time and he finds the corner. Pings that low corner, back to back goals. Bauer and Grimes. Number nine, Brandon Grimes, just with all that time and room he has, leaves the defender behind him, plants his feet, releases high above the shoulder, fires it down low. Look at the placement, a beautiful shot there of just showing, even though it's just a great placement in the net. Coach Melman just saying how Grimes has really been asserting himself more. Two goals in the Georgetown game. 20 goal season a year ago with 14 assists. A former member of Team USA U19s. Played up the street at Boys Latin. You better buckle your chin strap and put on your mouthpiece on some of these ground ball scrambles as Diego Roman tries to snake his way out of there. Kill Rain scoops it up but throws it across the field to the green jerseys. Outside bomb from Remy Reynolds goes wide. Loyola has the backup. So Greyhounds have given up back-to-back -back goals. They didn't play a great third quarter last week against the University of Maryland in College Park. Charlie, too many, too many mentioning to us that he didn't like the energy level coming out of halftime. Terps outscored Loyola 3-0 on their way to an 11-4 win. Binney, James. Houston, moving pick, Loyola, turnover. Momentum now shifting to Hopkins, you can feel it. That was a really important offensive possession for Loyola. Again, the shot disparity, Hopkins with 20 shots, Loyola just with 12. Zone ride, nice back check. Good hustle by Melendez, lifting Chase Gregory. With, with the hands and finds Mustang Sally. Back to Stout and Loyola. Luke Murphy, one headband pass to Mustang Sally, so a really effective clear there. Loyola so well schooled in their clearing patterns, their spacing, the different angle passes, diagonal passes that can be made. Something they spend a lot of time on at the beginning of practice. Such an important aspect of the game. You, when you watch Loyola, it looks like they are thinking a play or two ahead, people in the right positioning on the field. In case you're under pressure, you have an open person to get it to. Hounds now operating with two players on the crease. 
Some different personnel, Luke Murphy. Behind Dominicus, inside. Henry Haberman. Much needed score for Loyola. Haberman with the second goal this season. Loyola makes this look just really easy. Haberman to the inside, stick side high. Almost looks like Erlen maybe gotten screened a bit by his defender. Snappy release off the ball movement, though, sometimes can be difficult for the goalie to track that from one pocket into the other pocket and just gets your head moving. Loyola's first goal from guys who aren't their big three, Patra, James, or Minicus. Ball comes down with spin. Angelus behind the defense, buries it. This ball lands here on this scenario with all sorts of spin on the carpet. You've got to know that anytime the ball hits a player, goes up in the air, hits a post, goes up in the air, it's going to come down and kick. Loyola misplays this short hop, and Angelus is cherry picking. You gotta love those gifts as an offensive player. This ball comes right to Angelus. Bounce, bounce, deflection. Right there. Goes through a sea of Loyola defenders. Love the patience for Angelus. He's got all the time. Quick fakes. It almost looks like he looks to the side. There was no player there to pass it to. The goalie doesn't know that, though. Looks to the side and able to fire it in. And beautiful finish. Face-off violation against Loyola. Bounce shot. Not a great decision. Easy stop by Stout. And now the lefty looks to clear. Luke Stout, senior from West Genesee in Syracuse, New York, school that's legendary in terms of producing quality players. As Loyola doesn't clear on time. Now we got a fast restart for Angeles. Headman pass to Melendez, but Loyola does a good job, and they, re they recover inside with all their personnel. So turnovers, turnovers are going to be the issue when Charlie Toomey watches this tape. Ryan Evans off the left wing. To Grimes, who has one outside cannon by Chauvet, he forced that. It's not going to go against a, a goalie of Stout's quality. Good defensive pressure for Hopkins. Hopkins doing a better job riding now also. Clogging up the middle of the field. Got to get over the midline before the clock hits 60 seconds. Kilrain with a wrap check. Higgins struggling. Six in white is Quinton Kilrain, a freshman. Good looking lefty pole from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. He's a player. Watched their UMBC scrimmage, and you can tell right away as a youngster, he's ready to play at college speed. He's got a lot of praise. They expect to work him in a lot more into the lineup. Stabner got a stick on that. Minicus does a nice job with the ground ball. Hopkins pressing out now and challenging these matchups on the perimeter. The tip of the spear, they call it, and they want to get out and play the ball. Higgins giving room. Erlen brushes that aside. Wow, Hopkins gets the call and the backup shot on their bench. So it didn't look like much, Sheehan, but that was a nice little save, maybe with his left elbow by Erlen. Smith now running for his life. Chased by Diego Roman. Ball pops out of his pocket. Stout now piling up the ground balls in this game. He's done a really nice job. Deep outlet. This ball will stay in. This ball will stay in. And Loyola now will sub with seven minutes to go. We're tied up at three at halftime. Bauer and Grimes gave Hopkins a 5-3 lead. Haberman. Cut it to one. And then now Hopkins up by two. Let's go, 
Matt Houston played for Australia last summer in San Diego during the World Championships. Stabner's done a nice job on Patra today. 51 in green is an excellent, excellent player. Here's hit. Houston, slow bouncer. Minicus, he's dangerous, turns the corner. Erlen is there. Erlen saw it clearly in a great top hand movement. Took that stick from his right shoulder to his left shoulder quickly. Loyola with the reset. Didn't like body punches to this Hopkins defense. Outside bouncer too easy. Erwin's gonna eat that up all day long. You can see him just track that ball, make that crossbody save. Patrick Deans now, he's got a trailer of Vilas behind him. But he circles and Bauer will control. So Jay's up, 6-4. Defense just worked hard for a, an extended possession. So this is smart for the offense to chill a little. It's complimentary lacrosse. You've got to understand the demands of each half of the field. And you can see Jacob Angelus, number 23 in white, signaling with his hands up in the air. Let's slow it down right now. Don't push his transition. Collison swimming Mustang Sally. Collison is an enormous lacrosse player. It's 6-4. Jay's in their set now. Pesco to Bauer. Melendez has been quiet, but he's got a shorty now. Let's see what he does. Loyola shows adjacent, and the skip pass is picked off. Cool oh, hand. big hit. This will be a turnover. It's a nice pickup by Joe Houlihan on that skip pass. Loyola wants a call, none coming. Effective ride by Hopkins, and they get a full reset of 80 seconds on the shot clock. Jays only have three goals in settled sets. They've got two extra man goals. They've got one goal, Angelus, on a ground ball. There's, their their half-court offense has not been prolific today. And really, that's a credit to Loyola's defense. I think they've played great six-on-six six defensively. Loyola's got great fundamentals defensively. Slide drawn, Bean. Hedges down and Degnan makes him pay. Watch 55 in green step down to the ball carrier because he doesn't like the matchup. Eleventh goal this season for Gary Degnan, his third of the day. He is so dangerous from the outside. Starts with a turnover. And Dick Degnan's able to get the ball into his stick. And makes this Loyola defense pay. Too much separation. Hopkins. Black History Month, we celebrate Morgan State 10 Bears, their lacrosse program founded in 1970 by Coach Chip Silverman. They were the first HBCU lacrosse team. This photo is from a 1975 upset when they beat, the Bears beat number one ranked Washington and Lee. Miles Harrison, current fans know him as the dad of Kyle Harrison, played at Morgan State and co-authored the book 10 Bears with Chip Silverman. Such an awesome story. I remember talking, talking to Dr. Harrison saying he was a football player and he and a friend went to uh, somebody at North Morgan State and said, we got to start a lacrosse program. And his son, Kyle, just a huge legend here at Hopkins, such a phenomenal player. Went to friend school, not a couple miles away from here, not too far. Terrific now to see U.S. lacrosse and the HBCUs starting sixes lacrosse programs. And Morgan State just a few miles from here as well. Every time I drive by that campus, a new building seems to be going up. Would love to see them bring back lacrosse to that school. 
I'd like to see lacrosse at Howard in D.C. and here in Baltimore at Morgan. I'm friendly with Morgan's new wrestling coach, Kenny Monday. He actually became a, a neighbor of mine, an Olympic gold medalist. Lives two, two doors down from me. And he's done a mar remarkable job building their wrestling program from scratch. The same could be done at the Division I lacrosse level. So Hopkins has played a really good third quarter. They're up 4-1 in this quarter. Stout. Sees the ball, gets that great top hand movement, and his rebound control really is notable. But the turnovers continue for Loyola. Degnan with the pickoff, a two on two lefty rip. There it is, Stout again. Keeping the Greyhounds in the game. Their fans are on their feet. Give them a big applause. Stout is bringing it. He's got the energy, pumping it up. Tenth save of the day for him. Opportunity now for Loyola Minicus, and it's by Erwin. Erwin gets a piece of that with his sweats, but Loyola scores. That's a goal that should get credited to goalie Luke Stout. He's standing on his head. Their fans are rejoicing, looking at selfies on their cell phones. Luke Stout just reading the ball very well. Quick clear, bringing the ball in from outside the crease. And is able to get it down for quick, quick clear. And Minicus with a quick stick in. Minicus from Patra. Stout goes to the water bottle. Important face off. Ooh. Flag. And a flag against Johns Hopkins. Tyler Dunn's going to be whistled for a, for a potential elbow here. Interesting, we've seen a lot more Tyler Dunn than we have of Logan Callahan. Other news to report is that Brooks English, Hopkins midfielder, is back on the bench with a boot on his right ankle, or left ankle, I believe. He went down early in the game. Looked like he stepped oddly, slipped on the turf, stepped oddly on that ankle. That's a big loss for Hopkins. He's had three assists on the season. One minute non-releasable. And this is this is a lack of discipline that Peter Milliman spoke to us this week. You know, Hopkins has been flagged in Denver, costing the game. And, and, and you see, it's obviously high. Tyler Dunn there. It's above the shoulders. Pete Milliman, the same thing happened late against Georgetown, allowing for a potential Swamp Dog comeback, but Hopkins has got to do two things, he said. We've got to be more disciplined, stay out of the penalty box, and we've got to finish. The non-release pen penalties have been an issue for Hopkins. They can kill some of the momentum. It felt like Johns Hopkins was really owning this game in terms of energy-wise, and Loyola's been able to climb back. Huge save. Stick side stop by Erlin. A little too strong on the outlet. But great hustle by Brett Martin. He and Degnan now control for the Blue Jays. 60th meeting in this rivalry. Hopkins controlled this rivalry in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Loyola never beat him. Shut down the rivalry until the early 90s. Loyola with their first win in 1994. Surprise, surprise, Loyola's won seven of the last nine in the series. The Battle of Charles Street. A lot of those games have been really close. Collison now, this is a matchup. He's got a, a distinct size advantage over McGillicuddy. Six and green. Good pick. Clock down under 30, shot clock at about 11. Degnan looking for his fourth. Pump and go, nice save by Stout. Took that one off the right shoulder. And we've got a Loyola player down injured. Degnan is playing a sensational game today. Stout. 
told you, Shane, I went to one of their practices on a Thursday, and he was just on fire all day long in practice. The defense bringing the energy and the spirit. I, I was really impressed. And so I was a little shocked when Loyola scored 18 goals against Georgetown. But, uh, you know, Charlie Toomey, Loyola head coach, an All-American goaltender, led Loyola to the national championship game. There is nobody in college lacrosse who has a track record of teaching goalies the way Charlie Toomey does. You watch them, the practices, the drills he does, the focus. He has got a, a track record of producing outstanding goalies. Good to see Alex Bean walking off the field. Bean comes over to the sideline. And now we get to see freshman Jake Wilson makes the first appearance in this game. Being the captain lefty from Palo Alto takes this shot. Okay, that's what happened. I thought it was a pump and go. He shot it and he, he ate the shot. Power. Really quick. Clock now, 10.3. Blue Jays have won this quarter. So we were tied at three at halftime. Angelus. It's deflected by Stout. Alley-oop in front. No connection. Seconds ticking away. And that's the end of three quarters. Homewood Field in Baltimore. They've been playing lacrosse here since 1906. Two schools separated by less than two miles. All the pageantry, the history the tradition and the passion. One of the main thoroughfares, it's a north-south street here in Baltimore, Maryland. Charles Street starts down by the Inner Harbor and snakes its way north past Johns Hopkins and then two miles up the road to Loyola University. And the Greyhound fans have made their presence felt here in this 60th meeting between these two Rivals, Loyola out of the Patriot League. Johns Hopkins now plays lacrosse in the Big Ten. This is an early season barometer game. Peter Milliman and the Jays sit at two and one. Loyola at one and one. Nice face off win. Oh, tic-tac-toe passing. Kill Rain. Stout. Making miracles, Kilrain steps in the crease and there's no call. Kilrain blatantly falls in the crease and the referees miss it. Not sure how that happens. Stout keeping Loyola in this game, the goaltender. Now with 12 saves. Bauer splits left to right, covered by Diego Roman. Mustang Sally now on defense. 23 in green. Little give and go, Pesco. Rister. 19 to shoot. Hopkins feels like they've controlled the time of possession now in the second half. Skip pass, far side, overhand, Ooh. bouncer. Wow, pegged a teammate in the back of the head. It's twice now in this game that players have gotten hit by shots. That time it was Collison. Earlier we saw Alex Bean eat a shot. It is so important that you wear the correct equipment. Young people playing this game, you need a mouthpiece. You need a certified helmet and shoulder pads. Again, a lacrosse ball weighs four ounces and it's moving at 100 miles an hour. All the chest protectors have been upgraded. Always keep your eye on the ball. Never turn your back on the ball. Dive shot, Melendez, and now a whistle. That should be a shot clock violation, but they're gonna call a loose ball push on Johns Hopkins. Loyola's offense has not been great in this game, yet they're still in the ball game. Hopkins pressing down on the ride with three attackers. It's a great play defensively by Remy Reynolds, the transfer from Rutgers. 
Reynolds, a lefty. He's got good wheels. He's covered Angeles today, and he's done a fine job against Angeles and Melendez. Loyola's close defense has taken those two guys out. It's been Degnan on the extra man. Go time for this Loyola offense, trailing by two. Patra. James cradling right-handed. Four different goal scorers for Loyola. Minikis with two. Higgins barrels to Kamish. So Higgins draws the crowd. Kamish slicing in on the goal line extended. Fans on their feet. Joey Kamish gets his first goal this season. Back in 2022, he had four goals against Hopkins. Watch number three, gets to the inside, quick fake high, drops the stick low. Great movement, and he's wide open to get that score. Fifth goal score of the game for Loyola. Hopkins has the advantage at the faceoff. 10 to six, make it 11 now for Hopkins. Faceoff comes up to the Blue Jays, and Peter Milliman has gone exclusively with Tyler Dunn, 30 and white, the senior from Calvert Hall. Logan Callahan had been their primary foe-go. Dunn is a scrappy competitor, maybe not as talented on the clamp portion of the faceoff, but a great handler. He can exit well, he's speedy, and he's willing to win the war. We want more. It's an asset to have a, a lot of great face-off men. Really, it's a grinding position. Grimes, no penalty. Grimes now, like a pinata, gets pummeled. Look at this checking. This game is fierce. Hopkins gets a fresh shot clock off the turnover. No real estate is for free today. You, you got to earn the right to carry the ball up the field. This has been a hard checking game. Degnan with a rollback against Mustang Sally. That's not really Garrett Degnan's game. He sets a down screen for Ryan Evans. Excellent defense by Jacob Sullivan, 32. Probing is Hopkins with 40 to go in the shot clock. Angelus inside, he had Grimes. Ball's gonna roll out towards the midfield line. That was a good look by Angelus. Grimes just missed it. Angelus is so quick, he just changed direction, gets his hands free. How much gas does Loyola have in the tank now defensively on this extended possession? Can wear you down. They've been very good six on six. Angela sprinting away from Reynolds. Shaw back finds the corner. The freshman has magic in his stick. Just possession. That right there, seeing the ride back. Ryan Evans with some great hustle. The pursuit and the checking, and Chauvet's shot there. It just is a, a low bouncer. Does not come off that turf much more than about seven or eight inches. Look at the bio of Hunter Chauvet, a freshman from Ohio. Not a dodger, but he can find the space, and he's got a magical release. Three against Towson, three against Denver. Gets on the board today. Big shot and a lot of confidence. See a flag. Should be a holding violation coming up against Hopkins, so a free opportunity, and we'll have a whistle. 10-17 to go. Power play time for Charlie Toomey and Loyola. Got the feeling that this is a, this is 
still a lot of time, but th this is an important scenario coming up. White foul number 30, hold, 30 seconds. Holding for 30 seconds. Loyola's been one of five on their EMOs. Kamish, top of the formation. Three in green is the, the quarterback here. Higgins has a strong lefty outside shot. Kamish with a sidewinder. Laser into the netting. Referees talk it over. Officials have done a much better job in the second half. Sneak attack, snuffed out by Erlin. Went down to his knees like the hockey goalie that he was in high school. Did that not look like a hockey goalie? <laughs> Drops the turf. Big stop by the specialty unit. Blue Jays now up by two, under 10. Chris, the Hopkins man down defense, limiting Loyola just one of six in their power plays. Advantage out of the sub box. It's Collison left-handed. Wow. Stout gets a piece of that, and that thing ricochets almost all the way downtown. This is the point in the game that Hopkins has yet to stomp out their opponent. They have not finished with authority. Clearly, they're lost to Denver, but even against Georgetown in that game, they defeated Towson with a strangling defense late in the game, but offensively, a point of emphasis from Peter Milliman this week to us when we spoke to him this week with our producer, Adam Coppinger, was we need to finish finish the fourth quarter. Don't let up. Don't let teams climb back in. Degnan looking for another. He's got three. 21 career hat tricks now for Garrett. Young man, DeMatha, when he was when he was in high school, got severe salmonella one summer, got mono another summer. And was under-recruited because of that. Collison working on the corner. Mustang Sally doing a nice job against Collison. Angelus draws two. Now Collison left hand and finds the far corner. What a snipe. What a snipe. Third goal of the season for Collison. The sophomore. Watch this play. Love the placement of this shot. Just steps up. Even in the replay, doesn't look like there's that there's much depth that he can there. see. And he's able to find it, pings off the pipe. I mean, there is nothing there. There is nothing there. Hopkins now with the three goal lead. This is a very good Johns Hopkins team, a quarter finalist a year ago. Kind of revitalized the program last year but they're not where they want to be, and that's championship weekend. And it's been a while for the Blue Jays to play in championship weekend. They have a good team this year. All the parts back from a year ago. Can they be great? Flag down. Dylan Binney, lefty from Woodlands, Texas, suburb of Houston. Higgins sails that one over the six by six. A lot of penalties in this game. It's 
a holding call, 30 seconds. A lot of penalties in this game. Eric Pacheco, the grad student from Colorado, is held. And another power play for Loyola. Like that feed to the Good inside. Good interior defense by Hopkins. They collapse. You play man down defense inside out. And here's Kilrain, and he'll get bailed out by Peter Millen with a, with a timeout. And so Johns Hopkins man down unit done a nice job today. Collapse the middle. Seven minutes to go. Let's find out if Hopkins can finish, if they can stomp out their local rival. Hawkins two or three. Battle of Charles Street. Nine six Hopkins. Turnovers for Loyola. And then their power play is only one of seven. Garrett Degnan has been the MVP. Loyola goalie Luke Stout. Certainly deserves some votes in that category. And Hopkins now, seven minutes to go and a three goal lead. They learned one thing in that season opening loss to Denver is that they put 60 minutes up on the board for a reason. A lot of lessons, I think, coming out of that Denver game. Got to finish the fourth quarter. Yeah, lessons and growth, right? Losses aren't the worst thing. It's failing to learn from your losses. That's the worst thing. See, you're seeing some patience now, and Loyola pressing out against these ball carriers. Hopkins ragging the clock. And you mentioned those penalties. That we've seen a lot of them today, and even though Loyola has not been affected, credit Hopkins' man down defense. Hopkins has to be careful with their penalties. It has hurt them in the past, hurt them in that Denver game. So in this final minutes of the fourth quarter, they've got to make sure they play smart. Angelus robbed by Stout. You could see the speed of Jacob Angelus. Battle of Charles Street. 9-6 Hopkins. Turnovers for Loyola. And then their power play is only one of seven. Garrett Degnan has been the MVP. Loyola goalie Luke Stout. Certainly deserves some votes in that category. And Hopkins now, seven minutes to go and a three goal lead. They learned one thing in that season opening loss to Denver is that they put 60 minutes up on the board for a reason. A lot of lessons, I think, coming out of that Denver game. Got to finish the fourth quarter. Yeah, lessons and growth, right? Losses aren't the worst thing. It's failing to learn from your losses. That's the worst thing. So you, you're seeing some patience now, and Loyola pressing out against these ball carriers. Hopkins ragging the clock. And you mentioned those penalties. That we've seen a lot of them today, and even though Loyola has not been affected, credit Hopkins' man down defense. Hopkins has to be careful with their penalties. It has hurt them in the past, hurt them in that Denver game. So in this final minutes of the fourth quarter, they've got to make sure they play smart. Angelus robbed by Stout. You could see the speed of Jacob Angelus. A Loyola player down. Yeah, looks like a cramp. Blue Jay wins the race to the sideline. I thought Loyola got there first. Yeah, so did I. They, it's been a, an issue today if you're a Greyhound fan. As you see Max McGillicuddy is in some pain. Senior from Connecticut. Let's look. It's closest to where the ball goes out. When the ball goes out, who is there closest? And I see the dive. Yeah, it looks like Angelus is closer to the line, but the Loyola player, McGillicuddy, is much more closer to the ball. Right when it goes out. Is that geometry? And all about the, uh, the angles, too. Depends on, on where you are in the field. But So they get a reset of the shot clock. The good news for Loyola's defense is this injury now stops the clock, gives him time to rest. And McGillicuddy in, in no 
hurry to get off the field. Smart move. Use the monitor on, in the uh, substitution bench area to double check the clocks. These non-conference games are become important. You know, Maryland's got that win over Richmond and a win over Loyola. You think about this time of year, it's all about that cross-pollination. And which conferences? The Patriot League, quite honestly, it got off to a nice start. Colgate beating Penn State, Loyola beating Georgetown. So it'll be interesting. That, to me, that's what's most fascinating, Sheen, about February and early March across before league season starts. You see which conferences can kind of uh, stockpile quality wins. And the wins and losses, I mean, as we've seen with the NCAA tournament selection process, they really matter. It's hard. You want to be growing and you want to be learning. They do. And, and success by other members in your league helps you dramatically with the RPI system. You think about a couple years ago when the Ivy League kind of cornered the market on the NCAA bids. Last year was ACC and Big Ten. Nice fake. Hopkins, patience. Patience, patience, and then precision. Four goal lead now for Hopkins. Loyal defender gets tripped up. Angelus just has been a display of patience today. The quarterback of this offense comes around wide open, fake, fake. Gets Stout moving out of position. Beautiful job, just miscommunication there on the slide defensively. Big time goal. Right-hander, graduate student, Chantilly, Virginia. 61 points a year ago. He's got great wheels. He's got really good feet, obviously. Love his eyes, and there's a certain toughness. He's just gotten better and better at that quarterback role. He controls the pace. To, to me, he's the most valuable member of, of the offense. They call him Angel. Loyola fans now heading out to the Charles Village area to hop in their cars and head up the street. Still plenty of time left. This is a, an eternity almost. They, they obviously didn't watch the Denver game. <laughs> Answer, Patra from James. They better stay in their seats. And that's where Patra is most dangerous. He, he's a terrific player from mid-range. He's going to play in the Premier Lacrosse League. He'll probably end up playing in, in the Indoor League as well as a midfielder coming out of the box against short stick matchups. I, I love his game in, from the end, 8 to 10 yard range. Ooh, excellent finisher. Background in, in box lacrosse. And look at just the, the power he's able to generate with that release point. Margin is three. Loyola fans continue to file out. Hopkins just with the narrow edge on the faceoffs. It's going to go Loyola's way. Loyola ball here now. Can they stack the goals here? Really important offensive Houston possession. Houston open out of the sub box. Here he is, Matt Houston. Oh, we missed the net by about three inches to the right corner. He saw it too, it was wide open. And a crease violation after the shot. And now a timeout Loyola. So Charlie Toomey calls timeout with 4.27 to go, down three. You got to think the 10-man ride or some kind of pressure is coming here. Hopkins has got to draw up their clear on this frigid Saturday in February. Jacob Angelus and Garrett Degnan have been the, the premier point producers. We talked about Angelus in the open, his ability to create offense, great shot placement. And this beautiful play here. Watch the patience on display. Wide open. He's played midfield and attack in his time at Johns Hopkins. 
but he's just one of those players that they want to keep on the field at all times, settle into his role. It's kind of a nondescript, what you say, six points? Kind of a... I've already forgotten what I just said, but he's, yeah. had, he's been involved in much of the offense. A quiet... Six a points. Qu it's been Two an efficient four and quiet six <laughs> points. I mean, you know what it's like. like. Throw the ball to Garrett and good things happen. You know, you get, that, you get a teammate who's got the outside shot. You keep it simple. But then he's, he's just making the right place. Cherry picking, gets a goal there. Turns the corner, defense makes a mistake, so he's capitalizing on, on, on what's available. One thing I, I do like about his game is low turnovers. You know, he, he's just really solid in decision making. And again, I think Jacob will be drafted or play professional lacrosse for the PLL. Probably not as an attackman, probably as a midfielder out of the box who can attack you from the wing and from X. His speed and skill set, uh, they're just kind of rare. He's just 5'9", but the, the way he's able to just, with his footwork and speed, create separation from his defender. Ten-man ride now, yep. open net. Chase Erlin eyeing it up from 60 yards. Oh, he's going to take a shot from 60. Oh. oh, what a save. What a save. Luke Stout robs him. A diving save. I don't even know if Stout had two hands on his sticks when he made that save. It was a beautiful-looking shot, though, from Erlin. Right Higgins on. now. One more, down low, James stuff by Erlen when the ball pops behind the net. You talk about big time plays. That save by Erlen was really game saving. Hopkins defense completely fell asleep and collapsed. And once again, can Hopkins finish games? Jacob Angelus, their captain, telling the Baltimore Suns Ed Lee after the Denver loss. We got tired. Getting tired is not a valid excuse. Look at this, 60-yard shot. Full dive mode for Stout. Looking like Brooks Robinson on third base. And then Erlen looked like his body was kind of faked out a little, but he kept that right hand. He almost baited that shot to the near pipe. Let's see if the Jays go in there from all out stall now. Up three with three to go. One thing she and we've learned in the shot clock era is keep attacking. Oh, Angelus does just that. Too quick. Angeles putting his footwork on display. Third goal today. Seventh point. It looks like he's going to go behind the cage. Instead, he sees the opening, cuts to the inside, matched up with all the short stick, takes it. Excellent switch to the hands. Just so show shifty and dynamic. Love his feet, how his feet are never far off the ground and he can change directions. And Stick checks. Is that going to stay in bounds? Zigging and zagging. And if, if you can run this sport, it's got your name written all over it. Ten man ride now, once again, for Loyola. The, the goal is empty. Scott Smith, long strides over the midfield line, finds Melendez in the corner. So, really well done by the Blue Jays. Travel to North Carolina next week. Loyola will host Rutgers. I tell you, Charlie Toomey and Loyola deserve credit for their schedule, their non conference schedule. Playing Georgetown, Maryland, Johns Hopkins, Rutgers. They'll play Towson. They also have their normal Patriot League slate. And as I said earlier, the Patriot League looks strong this year. Colgate beating Penn State. Army returning. Most of their lineup, Bauer, exclamation point. Hopkins really creating some separation in this fourth quarter with the five goal lead. Bauer gets his fourth goal this season, second of the day for him. Able to beat the 10 man ride and settle in offensively. Those in the desert still watching this game intently. Bauer.
gives Hopkins a five goal lead. Coach Millen telling us that just Dylan Bauer just runs by guys, makes those simple plays. Bauer started off strong last year as well. Kind of got banged up. Senior from Park City, Utah. Beautiful little western town with their ski resort. There's great hiking trails there. Highly recommended, Shan. Melendez backhanded. Insurance, six goal lead suddenly. So this game was tied at three at halftime. Hopkins led seven to five, and they have exploded late. Scoring six of the last seven goals. An 8-6 game is suddenly 13-7. Melendez with over two points, two or more points each game this season. Look at this backhanded shot. The transfer from Marquette. Really efficient shooter. Last year led the team in shooting percentage. That backhanded oh. shot that Lyle Thompson trademarked. Coach Milliman's going to be pleased with the way Hopkins has played the last 10 minutes of this game. After prior efforts didn't show that ability to finish, to stomp, to emphatic, to use your depth. You know, Hopkins plays, their, their attack is, is what it is. It's Melendez, Angelus, and Degnan. There's no subbing going on there. But they play a ton of midfielders. I really like what they've done in terms of their midfield defensive depth now with Brandon Avilas using McDermott and others. And that should show up late in games. Again, the Jays play North Carolina next week. I'll have their game on a Friday. Following that against Navy. Loyola will host Rutgers at Ridley next week. If you're watching on the app, don't forget, later today, it's Syracuse and Maryland, 6 o'clock on ESPNU. Clark and Cotter from the Dome. What's your take on that? Who do you feel? I don't know. Great face-off play both ways, goaltending. If Maryland wins face-offs, they're going to slow it down. If Cuse wins face-offs, the game will have great tempo. A lot of unknowns. Women's action this week, as we mentioned earlier, Northwestern, the returning champs, lost to Notre Dame. To some great non-conference matchups. As Degnan's gonna be flagged for a foul here. And high school lacrosse starts. In, in Baltimore, it starts next week. Tryouts, February 20th. How's that gonna go, Lex, Mom? Uh, we got two in high school now, so it's gonna be a stressful week in the Birch household. Good time of year, hopefully the weather cooperates. Hopefully you did your off-season training. And you got the, the gas tank fueled up. Well, Hopkins, emphatic finish to this game. They blew open a 7-6 game into a 13-7 win.